Now, it would be, quote, sheer madness for nations to carry on with the same path of destroying the natural world, the Prince of Wales has warned, at the launch of a new report into the economics of biodiversity. The Dasgupta Review, which was commissioned by the government, warns that our current pattern of growth and prosperity has, quote, come at a devastating cost to nature and says governments need to transform their entire economic approach. Well, there's no one, perhaps, who symbolises the battle to protect the planet more than the naturist and broadcaster Sir David Attenborough. He wrote the foreword to this report. I spoke to him earlier and began by asking him whether putting economics and ecology together would really succeed where other efforts to mobilise the world have failed. Who knows? Um, I think it's very important in that it seems that um, perhaps a lot of naturalists, like, like me at any rate, uh, always thought the economists were in, in a curious way our enemy because the, if you look at everything from an economic point of view, you know, it, profit and loss and so on, and, uh, and, and when you heard people talking about the GDP and, and, and looking at the nation's affairs and how much money they make, uh, nature seemed to get out of it. Uh, but in fact, the two have to come together. And this is uh, economists coming face to face with ecology and making sense of it. How do you quantify biodiversity and its erosion? That's, that's precisely what this report examines. Look at each ecosystem in its, in its turn to see what the elements are that, you, that are valuable and what are less valuable. And do you think we can make a, a, an internationally acceptable price I mean, in sort of an international currency price, let's take the dollar for a minute. Do you think we can do that uh, to specific losses of, that, of flora and fauna? That's the sort of problem, that's the sort of basis of, of what this report does. Looks at it from the point of view of a global value of any particular commodity. Like the seas, for example. I mean, uh, we, who owns the seas? At the moment, we all have been encouraging one another uh, to, to go at it, and, and, the, and the most powerful gets the most. And, and who cares about the welfare of the sea? We're now so clever at fishing that we can destroy whole fisheries, that we can get, lose the herring, we can lose the cod, and have done in the past, because we fight over it. OK, well, now we've got to agree. And the basis in order to agree is that we understand together what the value of something is and how to fix it. How much time do we have? How near a real disaster are we? I, I, I don't know how you would calculate that. Um, but all I know is that I haven't seen good news for year after year. Uh, there's news very recently, very immediately, that uh, they're going to reopen or they're going to open a coal mine in Cumbria, the first one in 30 years. I mean, is, is, are governments listening to what you're saying? Do you see direct improvement in, in behaviour in this regard? Well, um, yes, I, I think I, do, I honestly do. Um, and I think that the series of, of uh, COP um, conferences, of which the most important is coming up at, this, at the end of this year in Glasgow, here in Glasgow, um, is... Um, uh, uh, a sign of, of how we are all coming together and how we are going to, to agree ultimately. We have to because the alternative is unthinkable. The, the alternative really is disastrous until we start talking the same language. Now, the last pandemic was even long before you were born and it, it's with us and it's, it's quite unlike anything else in any of our lives. What does it say about our relationship with nature? Well, we are, we are a part of it, um, uh, and we both benefit from it and pay the penalties when things go wrong. Um, uh, pandemics uh, are, are not new, as you, as you point out. I mean, the, there was a, the Black Death. Uh, there have been pestilences. Um, and um, uh, the, what, what has happened now is, is Apart from anything else, the ease with which one pandemic now can overcome the entire world, that it can travel everywhere, because we can. And then you find a whole quadrant of people who are terrified of the vaccine or politically opposed to a vaccine. What do you say to them? Um, it is, it is a, um, a, an ignorance of medical fact. 
Um, and if you don't understand it, um, it's very uh, it's very easy to mistrust it. After all, you're dealing with something precious. You're dealing with your own body, your own life, and you wish to protect that. Quite right too. And if you don't understand what actually a, a vaccination does, and to some degree how it does it, um, then you say, "Keep off me." Um, and if there are if people who say that, and then get the upper hand in in in, in trying to persuade people and, and frightening people who don't understand, then you're in a serious situation. But fortunately, it seems to me that more and more people are understanding what this is, and the majority, I'm sure, of the population understands perfectly well that this is a, a, a great triumph of medicine. We've both had our jabs. I guess we could say something. How is it for you? I, it made no difference to me at all, as a matter of fact. I mean, I, close, I know close friends of mine who, who actually had a, uh, didn't feel too good after it, but I was absolutely fine. Well, I, like you, didn't have any kind of reaction at all. But I'm just wondering, how good is lockdown for you? Well, I'm very lucky uh, in that I've got a garden and I also live in, in London quite close to a marvellous park. Um, and so I can see the natural world. But even, even I, I mean, before, uh, I was so busy dashing hither, hither and thither. When I am actually confined to my own house and my own garden, I suddenly spend more time in the garden looking at birds and listening to birds and identifying birds and listing birds. And, and I'm not alone in that. A lot of my friends who actually before didn't really think all that much about, about the natural world, didn't think they were interested in the natural world, suddenly find that there's a, not only an interest, but a kind of solace that something takes you out of yourself to see the part of this natural world. There are snowdrops in my garden. I, I looked out of my um, window this morning from bed, and there they were, snowdrops. I, um, it lifts the heart. Um, and that, that you and I and, and the Snowdrops are all part of the same system. Isn't that a wonderful way to end our, our, our talk to each other? Because you're just revealing that even David Attenborough has managed to pick up new knowledge as a result of being locked down. That's a wonderful <laughs> note. Thank you very much indeed, Sir David. Thank you. Thank you.